In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. A little over a decade ago, in a small town in South Carolina, at Walmart, I learned the exact wrong thing to ever say to a woman. <laughs> when is that baby due? <laughs> Never again will those words come out of my mouth. Instead, I wait to make sure the woman has to 100% let me know that there is, in fact, a baby on the way. And then I still don't ask about due dates. Instead, I look, and I notice, and I see, and I say, you're glowing. This is not just a saying. This is not just something to keep me from getting in trouble. This is, in fact, the thing that I love to look for and see. Because this woman has a child inside of her. There's new life that's coming. Her love for the kid is already present, and you're able to see it. Today in our scriptures, we heard about two glowing individuals in the Bible. First, we have Moses. Now, he's coming down off a mountain. This is the second time he's come down off the mountain. The first time he came down off the mountain, he was not glowing. In fact, he was very angry. He was so angry that he broke the Ten Commandments. Uh, he dashed them on the ground. He comes in, yells at all the Israelites because they're worshiping a golden calf. Then he burns the golden calf, grinds it up, makes the people drink it. Uh, sorry, mixes it with water and makes them drink it. Uh, then he, the people are still not obeying or doing what they're supposed to do. And there winds up being a time where he, in, he asks who's with me. The Levites say we are. And the Levites wind up killing quite a few Israelites. Then he goes back up the mountain. God is mad at the Israelites for turning away from him, for turning to a golden calf. God says, Moses, look, I'm just going to start over with you. You have kids. Uh, we'll just get rid of all these Israelites, and we'll start over with you, and we'll make a whole new nation. And Moses goes, no, 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 please no. <laughs> um, think of all that wasted time coming out of Egypt. Think of those plagues you did. Think of all that stuff that happened. Um, also, uh, God says he's not even going to stay with them. And Moses is like, look, if you're not with us, there's no point. Please stay with us. Please keep the Israelites. Do not start over with my family. And God decides to stay with the Israelites. After this time of reconciliation, Moses asks God, at like at the end, right before he comes down the mountain, he says, God, can I see your face? God says, no. If you see my face, you'll die. But what I can do is pass by you. And when I pass by you, I'll say my name. So Moses gets behind a rock. God passes by. Moses gets to see God from behind. Then he comes down the mountain. And, God, and Moses doesn't know it, but he's shining. He's glowing. His skin has, is radiating from having been in the presence of God. It freaks everyone out. Last time he came down, he was mad. This time he came down, he's glowing. What's going to happen? He says, guys, come on back. Come on back. We can talk. Um, here's what God has told me. Here's the things he's commanded me. Here's how we're going to live as Israelites. Then he covers his face with a veil so that he won't freak people out. A little more creepy, but less freaky. The next glowing character we have is Jesus. First, sorry, <laughs> Moses, he was glowing because he's reflecting God's glory. This is very much like the moon. The moon doesn't have any light of its own. It reflects the light from the sun. Moses was reflecting the glory of God when he came down. Fast forward to Jesus. <laughs> he's up on a mountain. And Jesus is there with three disciples, Peter, James, and John. And then Moses and Elijah show up. And then, and Jesus is transformed. We call it trans, the transfiguration. It's where 
Jesus, rather than just reflecting God's glory, Jesus is able to be seen in his perfection. Jesus is able to be seen as God. Jesus shines because of he is God. And the disciples get to see that. And the disciples kind of freak out. And they say, uh, uh, uh. Well, actually, Peter and John, or yeah, James and John, sorry. James and John say nothing. They're just like, hmm, hmm. <laughs> Peter, meanwhile, is like, uh, let's build houses and live here forever. And then that doesn't happen. They're still freaking out. They're so, they, they're so like astounded by this thing that they saw that they come down the mountain and they don't say anything to anyone. And Jesus comes down off the mountain and just acts like everything's normal. Oh, he heals a kid that has a demon in him, but normal for Jesus. And they go on and everything leads up to Easter. Well, Jesus, he is able to be in us. And so we are able to have this glow, that the shining out, that is Jesus inside of us. We all have things that we glow for. Um, and many of us have things that we like to talk about. We might glow for our spouse. We might glow for our children. We might glow for our grandchildren. We might glow for, um, there's some football game that happened at the beginning of this month, or middle of this month. But you, you might glow for a team, you might glow for something else, but we all have things we glow for. It's the thing that shines through, the thing that shines out. And we're headed into Lent, which is a time where we look forward to the light. Now, not recently, but previously, Lent used to be the home stretch for people who were about to get baptized. It was the last 40 days before you got baptized. This, it was a time of extreme self-examination. It was a time of reflection, and it was a time of anticipation. It could take up to three years to go through the catechism, which is the learning what it is to be a Christian. So your last 40 days is like, we're almost there. Uh, it was a very different time frame than what we experience or what many of us experience today. Many of us, including myself, sometimes give something up or take something on for Lent. And frequently, it's really easy to start glowing for that thing we gave up. If we're waiting for chocolate again. We might glow for chocolate. <laughs> Counting down the days till chocolate returns to our, um, to our diet. We might have given up sweets or um, television, Netflix, something that has been getting in the way of our being able to spend time with Christ. But frequently we start to glow for that thing because its return is coming. And rather than anticipating Easter, we anticipate the return of that thing that we gave up. My wife and I, last year, went and did a thing called the Daniel Fast, where you eat only vegetables and water. Well, you drink the water. But it was really hard not to glow for meat <laughs> and its return. It was really hard not to glow for soda and its return. But what my wife and I found was that having given that up and only eating vegetables and drinking water our diet was changed in a way that people noticed because that's not what we normally ate or drank. So people started asking us, hey, what's going on, weirdo? Um, and we got to talk about how we were doing this for Lent and how it connected us more. Um, we, we grew in love and compassion for people who have dietary restrictions, which was an, an interesting thing for us. Um, but we also felt that we had this thing that made it so we were every day thinking about Jesus. Lent is coming up, starts on Wednesday, and we all have the opportunity to give up or to take on something. And as we enter Lent, if we think about how we're engaging and look for ways that the thing we bring on or give up will help us to glow 
for Christ, giving us that opportunity to shine out rather than wish that we just had that thing again. Um, Lent is a time where we look forward to the light, look forward to Easter. And this is a time where we get a real chance to glow for Christ. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Lord, Lord. About eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which was about to he was about to accomplish in Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah not knowing what he'd said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and, when, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. On the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met them, met him. Just then, a man from the crowd shouted, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He is my only child. Suddenly, a spirit seizes him, and all at once he shrieks. It convulses him until he foams at the mouth. It mauls him and will scarcely leave him. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, You faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was coming, the demon dashed him to the ground in convulsions, but Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And all were astounded at the greatness of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. 